Hey everybody, welcome to Boots and Jeans Riders. I am Rich. And I'm Cake. And today we're bringing you this video from our backyard. What we're going to talk about today is basically our budgeting for our long distance motorcycle trip. So we're going to long distance motorcycle trip. We're going to let you know how much it costs us to do the long distance motorcycle trip and how we come up with our budget. So stay tuned. We'll be with you when you get right back. We're going to dive right into it as soon as we get back. So you might ask why are we talking about our budget I know there's many of you out there wonder how we are able to afford two to three long-distance motorcycle trips 14 days or more every single year and every time we come up off a trip someone always asks us hey how much did that trip cost how you guys can go actually do this every single year two to three times what so, do you guys do what's your secret well we have no secret we just plan and budget and budget and our key secret if there's such a thing called a secret we over budget and make sure you stay around to the end of the video where we're going to tell you what we do with that extra money we come back with every single time we come back with it from a trip because we always come back with extra money always oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to cover three basic things it's going to be gas gas food food and lodging and lodging that's gonna be the three basics now we know there's a lot of things that we can cover for budgeting but we're gonna talk about the gas food and lodging okay first thing we're gonna start off with is the gas want to take it or want me to take it you go ahead on and take the gas okay the gas is it's kind of different the way we budget compared to other people normally you will go i can get this much gas per gallon Based on how I travel, I know I'm going 300 miles. I know what I can get on a gas tank. I know how much I can get fuel economy, so I base it on that. We do it totally different. We do it per day. And I'm going to explain. Wait a while. How we do it per day? For us, we have six gallon gas tanks. Or actually, six and a half six gallon and a half. gas tank. But we're going to use six gallon for this trip based on a two week trip. 14 days, like Cake said, 14 days. Now you can put this formula together for a longer trip if you want to, but we're just going to stick to 14 days for now. So what do we do? We base ours based on if we would run our gas tank 100% dry, you know, got to call a tow truck, got to get your thing towed because you ran out of gas, they got to put some gas in thing, which we'll never run our gas 100% dry, but it's just easier for us to do this because we've been doing this for a while, even in our vehicles. When we take our vacation, this is the kind of budget we use. So at six gallons, we look at California gas prices because you guys know. California is the most expensive place for gas. Out of lower 48, California is the most expensive. So for us, it normally goes $4. If we ever run it dry, how much it gonna cost us to fill the tanks up? And she rides her own bike, I ride my own bike, and so that's six gallons each bike. And at four dollars, if we will run it dry, one hundred percent dry, if which run, we never do. If you're running your bike dry, then you probably don't need to be on the road anyway. So it will cost twenty-four dollars per bike if we run them dry, which is twenty-four times two, forty-eight, and then for fourteen days, forty-eight dollars a day for fourteen days is what we need to budget for our gas. Now, you need to understand this. Sometimes we get to a location and we don't ride our bikes because we're out walking or we just riding our bikes short distances where we hit the back roads, motorcycle roads, and we could be there for three days and never gas up, which will save us three days times 48. And that's where we come out with a little bit more money. We come out on head. For us, that's how we over budget everything. And we're going to talk about that. So we just cover gas, which is pretty simple for us. Now, if you have a different formula that can actually help us out, make sure you write it in the comments below. We want to get the discussion going. So that's gas. Next up on the list is food. I told you we're going to go pretty fast. We're going to try to keep the video as short as possible. It's food. How do we budget for our meals? So 
You want me I'll to take I'll that? I'll let, let her take that. I I'm tired can. of talking. <laughs> I'll be back. Okay. We have food. We budget $20. $20 per meal per day. So time three meals a day, that's $60 a day. $60? <laughs> Told you I was coming back. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. $60 per day for the both of us. Not per person. Right. But it's for both of us. How we come up to that is we normally eat at restaurants like Denny's and IHOP, Mel's, Cracker Barrel, even Bob Evans. Yeah. Some yeah. fast foods, but we won't name those. So we come up and we, we probably spend about between 18 and 25 dollars mm -hmm. on the meal right so that's right. how we came up with 20. <laughs> that's how we came up with 20 dollars for the meal but now sometimes we don't spend the full 60 dollars a day because if we're staying at a campsite we'll go to the store and get some groceries for three days and it's normally less than 60 dollars a day for us to get the food that we want would like to eat at the campsite and then also we may not eat through pay for three meals a day and why is that Karen because sometimes we will stay at a hotel that serves free breakfast well the breakfast is included with the price of the hotel yes. we'll tell you about that in lodging later on coming up so that's how we plan for our meals Day. Yeah, our, our meal plan is, is, is pretty simple. It, it's not that hard. No. Um, and like she said, sometimes we won't eat three meals a day if we actually get a, a room that the meal is included in a price, and obviously that's to save us $20 for that day. And if we're on the road, we might be out in a national park or get tied up in something we're doing and we might skip lunch, so that saves us $20. Or we'll stop at a fast food, and our fast food only, only costs us somewhere around 10 to 15 dollars so that saves us money and with that extra savings we put it on the side like i say stay to the end of the video and we're going to tell you what we do with that money when we get home and that kind of covers that food okay so we cover the gas we cover our meals which is food and now we're going to cover our biggest budgeting expense now it's not what we spend it's what we budget and we always over budget every day which is lodging, lodging. Now for us, we try to figure out what are we comfortable with spending on a lodge every single day, What's on our it? stay, our hotel stays every single day. And for us, we don't stay in the hotels. For us, high price hotels is somewhere like 190 to $200, way up here. And we and won't we, pay that. We can't do that for 14 days. It's just not in our genes. Let's put it like that. And on the lower end, it'll be below 50 like 45 some of them 30 dollars a night and you get me, what you pay for you get what you pay for we learn yeah. from experience now we don't mind staying at those places but that would have to be a last minute resort when we know we couldn't get anything else we didn't plan that far ahead because we try to do sundown riders and then we get our hotels based on the time of day anyway we look at what we're comfortable with spending in between the 200 plus and the 35 and for us it was eighty dollars now some of you eighty dollars is super cheap and some of you is kind of expensive but for us we felt comfortable with comfortable with eighty dollars a Monday. night and based on this scenario a 14 day motorcycle adventure is 80 times 14 so we would have to put eighty dollars for this to complete this trip so we put $80 aside for 14 days and it cost this. And as you can see, that's the higher end of our budget that we have to budget for. Now, do we spend $80 a day on lodging? No, no. not even close. No. So we like to stay in places like Motel 6. Motel 6. What else? Super 8. Super 8, America Best Value. Yeah, America Best Value. Red, Red Roof. Red Roof and you know, things like that in along those prices. And they normally come from sixty five to eighty dollars, sometimes higher depending on what time of year it is or if it's a weekend. Or if now, there's an event in town. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Jack those remember prices that. up. Yeah, somebody tried to charge us $150 for a Motel 6. Not going to happen. No. Anyway, back to what we were talking about. Well, mind you, we always budget for 100% of motel and hotel stays, no matter how long the trip is. If we go on a 30-day trip, 80 times 30, and so far and so on. But we don't always stay in motel and hotel. We do camping. Camping. Lots a of camping. A lot of camping. We do camping, and we find campgrounds from 30 and below every single time. In fact, we were in Vermont. Vermont. Jamaica, uh, Vermont. No, Jamaica State Park. Was it Jamaica, yes. Vermont? Jamaica, well, Vermont. Well, we was in Vermont, and we stayed at one of Vermont State Parks and found a campground for $10 a night. $10. And we were there for four nights. Four nights, which means we only spent $40. And remember, our budget for lodging is $80 a night and we only spend for $40 we could have stayed there eight days and just cover one night so that's how yeah. we save a lot of money when we go out on these road trips we also what we also stay at friends and family houses. oh yes we, we don't hesitate to contact friends and family and ask them we pass through their town especially somebody we hadn't seen in a while ask could they put us up for a night or two Normally, they want to stay two nights, so we save money that way. And that basically covers our budgeting for gas, food, and lodging. This is how we are able to do two to three trips a year. When we book for hotels, we use all these discount rewards places oh, that's yeah, out. Yeah. Bookings.com, hotels.com, Wyndham Rewards. So when we stay at these places, some of them are free because we accumulated free, 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 free. rewards, free, free points to free. stay there free. Yes, that's a good point you brought up. So if we doing this 14 day trip and we got two nights free, we may not camp. Well, we was planning on camping for two nights. We may just use our hotel free. free. Now, matter of fact, let me, let me cover uh, miscellaneous. As you can see for this 14 day trip scenario, comes out to $2,600. On the road, there going to be oil changes, tire changes, um, what else? You know, miscellaneous Just miscellaneous, thing. Just miscellaneous. Uh, uh, expenses that we occurred entertaining. We do a lot of free entertaining. We're going to make a video on that, so make sure you watch the free entertaining. And things like that, we take a percentage and put on the side. We put 20% on the side of the total. That's 200 uh, I'm sorry, 2600 we take 20% of that and put it on the side and come up with emergency funds, entertainment fund, and normally with tire changes and oil changes, we know how much that's going to cost, so we just put that much cash on the side and do not touch it. So, this brings you to the end of the video when we talk about surplus, extra money, how we, what we're going to do with extra money. All that money that we didn't spend, when we get back to the house, no, no, let me back up. Let me hang up. Back up. On the way home, we normally treat ourselves. We fought, we, then we'll stay in a high price hotel, $200 or whatever the case may be. Yeah, I can get a spa treatment. Get a spa treatment. We have plush mattresses and, 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 and whirlpool tubs and stuff like that. So that's what helps us out a lot. Room and service. Even with that, yes, even with that, we still have a surplus of money left over. So yeah. now to the point of when we get home, what do we do with that extra money? Here's how we're able to do two to three trips a year. First of all, we plan a year out. So as we speak in today, we got three trips planned for next year that we're going to budget for. So we plan. But what we do is we create a separate account. Call it what you want. Travel account, motorcycle account. You know, you, know, you can find cheap campgrounds and, and plan Spending and plan and plan. Spending account. But we don't touch it. That way, it, it is hard not to touch it. Knowing it's there, discipline comes in. And it's hard. Now, if we need it for an emergency, of course we're going to take it. But it's not about that right now. So we put that on the side. And then when we plan our next trip, our next trip coming out, we know how much we got there. So we have budget our next trip, see if we have what we need for that account. And then what we don't have, we'll just raise that money. Let's say we take another 14-day trip and we know it's going to cost $2,600. Let's say we only spend $1,000 on our last trip. Then... All we need is another thousand dollars to cover twenty six hundred dollars, and we do that continuously, no matter how long the trip may be. 
over and over and over and over again. So, people, get out there, plan, budget, and go and do these great adventure motorcycle trips, seeing this great country, country. that we have, uh, national parks, national monuments, museums, all these type of things, which is actually a totally different video. We're going to cover how you can see some of these things practically free. So, make sure you subscribe. Hit that bell so you can be notified when our next video is coming up. And give us a thumbs up and share and write a lot of comments below to let us know what you think and give us some advice so we can make ours easier. Until then, the Boots and Jeans Riders, I'm Rich. I'm Kate. See you on the road.